Maroons of Suriname celebrated Maroon Day on 10 October 2024. And during the celebration, the Ganma, which is the paramount chief of the Okanisi people, his name is Bono Valenti, warned the government that his people are not prepared to give up their traditional habits without a fight. He said that it is time for the Surinamese government to take responsibility and to recognize the land rights of the Okanisi Maroon community and those of the other Maroons and indigenous communities. He said that any further delay will be seen as a deliberate attempt to deprive the Maroon people of their rightful heritage and that they are prepared to continue this fight with all legal means available determined to defend their rights as their ancestors did. Valenti was appointed for life by the Maroon people and is also recognized and sworn in by the Surinamese government. He said that the Okanisi people will no longer be misled by the continued delay and a lack of respect of the Surinamese government regarding the recognition of land rights. For centuries, he said, we have lived on the land of our ancestors, lands that were fought for and protected by their blood, sweat, and sacrifices. These lands are more than just pieces of earth. They are the soul of our people, the source of our culture, our identity, and our existence. He said, and I quote, I the gunman of the Okanisi people, the Bono Valenti, speak emphatically. We will not give up our traditional habits without a fight. Our rights to them are non-negotiable. The continued delays and evasive attitude of the government do not do justice to us, our communities, and our heritage. It is a gross insult. This is not just a legal issue but a struggle to preserve our dignity, our livelihood, our history, and our future. Valentini reminding the country that on this day, October 10th, Maroon Day, we commemorate the historic victory of our ancestors in 1760, who fought for their freedom with courage, struggle, and dignity. There is nothing to celebrate as long as the Surinamese government continue to refuse to recognize our land rights. The politicians who organize parties give nice speeches, but their words sound hollow as long as our rights to the land for which our ancestors fought are not guaranteed. Close quote. Valenti said he is calling on all Maroons and indigenous people to stand up together for their land rights. The Maroons stand strong, he said, but our strength is even greater when we fight in unity with our indigenous brothers and sisters. Together we can ensure that our land rights are recognized and respected. Make it clear, he continued, that I am not in favor of changing the group name Maroons. This name is a tribute to our ancestors who fought for their freedom. The Surinamese Maroon culture is one of the best preserved pieces of cultural heritage outside of Africa. Now, one thing we must understand is that there is a historic buildup to this moment. So let us go back and understand a little bit about the Maroon situation there in Suriname. This is an eyewitness account of a massacre in Maroon village of Moiwana on 29 November 1986. The eyewitness account was that they dragged my 12-year-old son from the house and shot him. They shot my wife in the foot. She fell on the ground and begged the soldiers not to kill her. She was running away and they shot her in the back. She was dead. Another soldier grabbed a six-month-old baby and put a barrel of the gun in its mouth and laughed. The baby took it eagerly like a baby bottle. The soldier pulled the trigger. The soldiers rounded up another group of seven people, six children and one woman. They lined them up in the middle of the village and placed a guard around on both sides and kept them there so they could not escape. 
They begged for their lives, but the soldiers shot all of them, dead. Bo Tursi's soldier took some of the bodies away. They dragged some of the bodies into houses, which they dosed with diesel oil and set on fire. Before the soldiers left, they burned the village to the ground. Suriname's current political crisis is deeply rooted in the tension between the ethnic communities. In order to understand the cause of the bloody civil war between the Maroon ethnic group and the National Army, which is mostly composed of other ethnic groups, it is first necessary to understand something about the ethnic composition of Suriname. The nation of Suriname has approximately 350,000 citizens and is about the size of the state of Illinois. It is located in the northeast coast of South America between Guyana and French Guyana. Formerly known as Dutch Guyana, Suriname only received its independence from Netherlands in 1975. Despite its small population, Suriname is one of the most diverse ethnic community in South America, with groups of East Indians, Indonesians, Chinese, Europeans, and Amerindians slash Blacks, or Creole and Maroons. The Maroon ancestors were African slaves who escaped from the coastal Suriname between the mid-17th and late 18th century. After more than a half century of brutal guerrilla warfare against colonial European troops, the Maroons' independence was recognized by the signing of the peace treaty with the Dutch in 1760s. This treaty allowed the Maroons to occupy a large part of the interior of Suriname, which has been their homeland ever since. The Maroons of Suriname, thus, were among the first people in this hemisphere to gain their independence. Ultimately, they became one of the largest, most concentrated groups of descendants of runaway slaves in the world. The Maroons had enjoyed 100 years of freedom before slavery had finally been abolished in 1863. Today, there are six Maroon groups totaling 65,000 who live in Suriname. The Juka, the Saramaka, the Matawi, the Aluku, the Paramaka, and the Quinti. The other black subgroups, the Creoles, are mainly descendants of slaves who did not escape from the plantations along with other Surinamese people of mixed racial origin. There you go, that is a little bit of the background when it comes to the Maroons in Suriname. And there are some good takeaway from this. They fought back. And because they fought back, there were a treaty and they were able to gain their independence a hundred years before slavery ended in the New World or in the West. 